This is Takazar. She's an ETAP 28, built to be a cruiser, not a racer, but we give it a good go anyway. That's Kev, unlocking the hatch. He owns Takazar. She's birthed in the inner harbour at Scarborough. If you saw any of episodes 1 to 4, you'll know he has skullduggery in the outer harbour, which dries at low tide. This side is dredged, so the boats float at all states of tide. We meet at the harbour an hour before the start of the race to get Takazar ready and get out of the harbour. That's Dave. He's the newest crew member on Takazar. He's just finished his day skipper theory course with Scarborough Yacht Club. That's James. He's been crewing on Takazar for about a year longer than us. He also did his day skipper and yacht master theory courses with Scarborough Yacht Club. Unfortunately, Liam's at work today. But really, if there's more than four of us on Takazar when we're racing, it's a little too crowded. We've had six on before, but three or four is the optimum. When there's four like today, one person is on the tiller, they're the helm. Two people are on the winches, and then one person is basically just used to try and weight one side of the boat down so she sails more upright. The race hasn't started yet. All the yachts are just sailing back and forth, waiting near the start line. This part of racing makes Liam nervous. You have to keep a sharp lookout because there's so many yachts close together, all wanting to be the first over the line. The race has started now. 
and we're all heading north up to boy number four. It's actually a special marker boy. It marks the end of an outflow pipe, I think. There's a northeasterly wind and we can't head directly for the boy, so everyone is having to beat up to it. That yacht behind us with the blue stripe on the hull is Scott Duggery, the boat we had before Sereda. It's so cool to see her new owners out racing her. We're falling behind a bit as usual. Like I said, Tagazar is built for cruising. She's a heavy boat. Most of the other boats racing are built for it, so they have an advantage. Fortunately for us, even if we're the last boat to cross the finish line, it doesn't necessarily mean we came last because of handicaps. I don't exactly know how handicaps worked out, but somehow they use the length, beam, weight, sail area, etc. of each yacht to work out its potential speed, and then each boat is given an individual handicap, with the aim being that where you come in the race is down to the skill of the crew, rather than the design of the boat itself. The wind speed dropped as we were heading to the number 8 boy and we got overtaken as we went round it. I took over on the helm for a while and the guys sat and had a chat as we had a long stretch before we needed to tuck again. Then I went on one of the winches to pull the jib over to the starboard side when we tacked. Somehow, I managed to bend my nail backwards and it was bleeding. We finished the race, took down the sails and motored back into the harbour. The next race was cancelled due to the 50 mile an hour winds. Before the next race, I gave Takazar's bottom a quick scrub as Samago is growing on the waterline and we always want to be as streamlined as possible. Unfortunately, 
This race ended up being cancelled at the last minute due to heavy seas. The Yacht Club doesn't like to take the risk that sending the racing fleet out in bad weather could cause an emergency where they'd need to call the lifeboat. However, unlike some of the small, light racing boats, Takazar was built for handling rough seas. So along with a few other yachts, we decided to go out for a bit anyway. The crew was there and the boat was set up, so we might as well get some good experience in not so favourable conditions. As always though, the waves never look anywhere near as big on camera as they were in real life. We also stayed relatively close to Scarborough South Bay, which offered some protection from the northerly swell. I was really hoping to end this video saying we booked our flights and had a date we were back on Sereda. However, when we went to book our flights, my cheesy brained husband realised his passport had less than six months until the expiry date. He's applied for a new one, but apparently with the Covid situation, processing time is now up to seven weeks. He's had a text to say they have received his old passport and his application has been approved, so we're still hoping he'll get his new one in the next three weeks and we'll be able to book a last minute flight and be back on Sereda by mid-October. Thanks for watching. I hope that was a bit of an insight for you into club racing at Scarborough Yacht Club. In the next video, I talk about how we're preparing to leave our life on land for a life afloat.